Thank you for the introduction. Well, my name is uh, Mike Simons. I'm going to do this uh, presentation in English. Wenn ich das in Deutsch machen wollte, kommen Sie heute nicht mehr nach Hause. Das dauert so noch ein bisschen. Ich bin one of the founders of Nibble IT. We started in 1990. First, let me introduce you to the agenda for today. I'll do some introduction of Nibble IT. Then I'm going to talk about some migration parts we do in practice in Holland and also throughout Europe. Uh, I'll try to speak a little bit about the lessons we learned from all the migrations we've done and afterwards there is a possibility to ask uh, the questions. Um, Nibble was founded in 1990 and we have uh, knowledge about several uh, database systems. Um, we are a one-stop uh, shop actually if customers come to, to our company we can do let's say migrate the customer from from their system to another system and we have uh, a number of disciplines we do there and they're all listed uh, here on the left side um, in 1990 we started with uh, postgres as an open source database we started out in 1990 with with, with ingress and in 2000 we adopted open source and we started with PostgreSQL. The last three years, we are a, a partner of Enterprise DB. Who knows? Who knows Enterprise DB? Who knows what Enterprise DB is? One, only one. Maybe a short introduction then of Enterprise DB. I think we all know um, uh, Red Hat as a company who uh, gives support on uh, on Linux. Um, Linux, we have the Fedora Corn kernel, which is the development kernel of, of Linux, and Red Hat takes that development kernel and hardens the code. Ted, do it through an extra uh, QA cycle, so do some extra tests, bundle some other products with it, and sell support with it. So they give support of the products, they compile the kernel, put products with it, and they give you a bundle and say, we can support uh, uh, this operating system. But the core of uh, Red Hat and Red Hat Linux is open source, which is the Fedora open source kernel. Enterprise DB does exactly the same with Postgres. Postgres is the open source uh, software from the open source community. Enterprise DB takes the open source or Postgres database, it hardens the code, it tests the code some extra, they compile it, they bundle it with some other products, and they provide support with it. And they sell it, or, or they, they actually sell subscriptions on support. So you can get, uh, let's say, Postgres support if you, let's say, um, get a subscription with Enterprise DB. Um, how is it possible that companies like Enterprise DB can su uh, provide support? Well, mostly those companies, we saw some other uh, companies on the board uh, from Professor Keller here. Um, Second Quadrant is one of the other companies who can also provide support on Postgres. And it's because those companies have committers, they call it committers on the payroll. And committers are people who are actually allowed and, uh, they, and they are skilled enough to make changes to the Postgres and commit that back to the community. So if you have, a, let's say, a production system with Postgres and you have a problem in your Postgres system and you have support with Enterprise DB, you can call up Enterprise DB like you can call up to Oracle and say, I got a production problem in my system. Uh, the production system is down, we're hitting a bug. They're going to start looking for you. They can provide you a patch and they can provide you a solution. And because they have those committers on the payroll, they are able to do that. There are only a few companies throughout the world who are able to do that, and Enterprise DB is one of them. So Enterprise DB is a little bit the same as what Reddit is for Linux, is Enterprise DB for Postgres. We're here today to talk about migration paths, migration paths from, let's say, Oracle systems uh, to Postgres systems. And if you, if you start looking for uh, one of the, the key issues here is to find the right project in your organization. Because if you're running on Oracle systems and you're getting a new DBMS, uh, we see a lot of out, uh, people out there who don't trust Postgres as a DMS, DBMS that can be compared to Oracle. So the DBAs don't trust the system, uh, the programmers do not trust, trust the systems. So you have to make a choice of what kind of 
applications you have running throughout your organization and if you're going to do initially initial migration to Postgres you have to pick the right project to say okay we're going to migrate this database with this application from Oracle to Postgres and what we always say there is don't take your most mission critical system to start with always start out with a less critical system that the organization can be aware of the product can get to know the product get familiarize itself with the product and you can start building trust with Postgres within that organization um, once the project is defined we always do an assessment an assessment is just a quick and brief we go through the Oracle code we go through the Oracle system and we say okay um, this is going to be a hard conversion or it's going to be an easy conversion so and then you can have a moment of okay we continue with the project yes or no as always after one stage you can define okay well let's stop here because we don't think it's going to work if the assessment is okay we have a number of proof of concepts uh, three of them and one is the migration so we're going to technically prove that the application works if it runs on Postgres instead of an Oracle if it technically works we could we do normally a, a proof of concept about high availability if it is necessary so if you want to have your 24 7 uptime how are you going to do that with Postgres within your organization so how are you going to do that technically and the last migration is a performance proof of concept. We're going to prove that, let's say, uh, the new system running on Postgres has the same performance characteristics as on Oracle. And if we met all those criteria, we say, okay, it is a successful migration. You can go in production with this system on Postgres. Huh? So the, the assessment gives us uh, just a, a report, a figure from 0 to 10 and 10 is a really easy conversion and let's say under 5 you're going to have some difficulties and we're going to see where the matching issue, where the matching code is and where the non-matching code is um, I talked about Enterprise DB and also one of the things and that was also already mentioned earlier what Enterprise Bay also provide us is a layer on top of Postgres uh, which they call Oracle compatibility. So that means if you have an application running on Oracle, you can take that application, this is theory here, yeah? you can take this application and run it on a Postgres database and you do not have to change any code. What we already saw in one of the slides is that Oracle of Postgres uses extensions. You can extend the product. And the Oracle compatibility is one of the extensions Enterprise DB built on top of Postgres. So there are a number of procedural languages, and one of the standard languages is, which is out there, which is uh, readily available if you install Postgres, is P they call PGSQL. And, but you can have another of other database languages in your database which are available throughout extensions like PL Java, then you have Java code as stored procedures, of PL Perl, then you have Perl code as your stored procedures. Enterprise B makes a language and they call it SPL as an extension and if you load that, SPL looks exactly the same as PL SQL in Oracle. So it looks the same it behaves the same, it smells the same, it is the same. So that means you can run all your SQL code on that Postgres database without changing and it will give you the same answers back as it will do within an Oracle database. The nice thing also there is that if you load a PLSQL procedure into Postgres and it is loaded and you ask the PLSQL procedure back from the database you will find your Oracle code back where you, where you started with. So it is not a one-time conversion. No, it understands the Oracle code, it stores it and it will give you back the Oracle code. If you run it, the Oracle code will be interpreted, executed within the database. So it is not a one-time conversion to a Postgres 
dialect or a Postgres language, no, it understands Postgres or Oracle code and will also give you back Oracle code. So this Oracle compatibility is for us really uh, important to have successful migration from Oracle to Postgres without, with a minimum of changes through the application. Of course, there are always things that work other, um, in another way in Postgres than in, in Oracle. And it has mostly to do with uh, the architecture of Postgres. Uh, for, for example, encryption, Oracle, Oracle uh, uh, data fault, for example, which, where you can encrypt all your data, that's not there in Postgres. So you have to solve that another way. That means that you do not can have encryption within your database. You can have, but you have to solve it another way. The other thing is, um, we talked about message queues, messaging within your database, which Oracle has, it's not there. And, and, and Postgres says, okay, there are plenty of third-party products out there. We can provide you the same functionality. Another example is GIS. Oracle Spatials is not the same as Postgres of PostGIS, so you have to convert it uh, yourself. So those are uh, a few examples, and if you're heavily using those functions, then a migration will have more work. You have to do more work with the migration than without those functions. Um, yeah. Which type of packages are compatible? Because I think None of the previous package from Rockin is at all. If you if you install the Postgres compatibility, uh, sorry, if you install the Oracle compatibility within Postgres, you will find about 100 uh, um, um, system tables in Postgres, which looks exactly the same as in Oracle. So, and there are also a number of DBMS packages available in Postgres which look exactly the same as in Oracle. There is, of course, there is, there is a border somewhere where it stops uh, um, uh, supporting all the stuff in Oracle. If we talk about uh, all the Oracle system tables, we talk about, uh, uh, well, hundreds of system tables there, if you use all the features, and there are about 100 available in, in Postgres if you install the, uh, the Oracle compatible uh, layer. Yeah? And uh, what about the PLSQL? PLSQL is completely PLSQL supported, yeah. Supported to which version of Oracle? Um, nine, nine or ten? No, no, even further. Um, it, where, it, where it is actually, where to it is really um, compatible, it's not uh, um, delimited by a version of Oracle. That's the, the border is somewhere, uh, not completely, say, okay, up to 9, and then up to 10, and then up to 11. Some features of 11 are already supported within Postgres, so the border is not really that strict. But we see that new functionality comes readily available quite quickly in the, in the Oracle compatibility layer if, or, if Oracle launches these new uh, language constructs, like partition tables, uh, is supported in Postgres uh, with the same syntax as you have within Oracle. If you go, if you look at from an architectural point of view, partition tables within Postgres are completely in another way solved than in Oracle. It's but same. it's not the same. But the syntax is the same. It's but functionality from a functional point of view, it will do the same thing for you. Um, we talked about the assessment. The next step, if we talk about <coughs> migration, there are some tools which can help you to migrate from an Oracle platform to a Postgres platform. Uh, the first thing we always try to do is a data-less migration. So we, we convert, uh, let's say, the database without the data and see whether we have any problems there with objects which are in the database which are not compatible with in, post, in, the, in Postgres. Um, and if all the objects are migrated and all the problems are solved, if there are any problems, then we can start with the data migration and, and test the application. Of course, this talk is about database migration. And of course, you have all, also you have the application which you have to run on your Postgres system, but is, that's another, it's a kind of other story. I, I'm going to mention that uh, later on some more about it. So, from the assessment, you can see that you can expect some problems because they're already there. The assessment, in the assessments, you say, okay, 
this is not compatible, this is not compatible, you have to rewrite this, you have to rewrite this. Uh, so we see some expected problems. Uh, with these expected problems, we can have a proactive uh, approach that we say, we already have a solution for this kind of incompatibility because we already solved it for another customer. Or we can design a workaround, we do uh, a workaround or redesign of the program. So that are the choices, choices you have. There are, you can also have some unexpected problems, some new problems, we never saw that before. And then we closely work, normally we close, closely work with Enterprise DB. Hey, with their Oracle compatibility, they provide the Oracle to compatibility and our experience with them is that they quickly respond to anything that's going wrong within the migration. So they, if we say, okay, we convert this language construct from Oracle to Postgres, Oracle understands this, Postgres doesn't, you say you have Oracle compatibility, how about it? They provide us a patch where they support the language constructs. Uh, we have our experience that those things are already implemented uh, before, the, uh, before the actual migrations. And of course, if you have unexpected problems, you can also think about redesign or reprogram a part of your code. So then we have an application which runs on a Postgres database. Uh, and we, we, we prove there that it is technically possible to run your application against Postgres. Um, of course you have a database, we talk about database migration here, and of course you also have an application. And if you talk about applications, um, some applications are easier to convert than other applications. And for all, if you're using Apex application within Oracle, our experiences don't start with those ones, they are really difficult or not possible at all. If you have Oracle Forms, and you have Oracle reports, yeah, you have to rewrite a lot of stuff. And even for those, we see now some solution coming from those, for those customers, that there are some uh, services available to do a one-time migration from Oracle Forms to Java, and to do a one-time migration from Oracle reports to Java, and you end up Java code, you can uh, maintain your Java code and run against the Postgres database with the Java code. Another big challenge is, of course, if you don't make your application yourself, but you buy your application. Because you cannot swap from an Oracle database to a Postgres database if you buy your application from an application vendor and you don't have any, let's say, contact with your application vendor, probably he's not going to support his application anymore for you. So you have to talk and work with this application vendor to say, okay, we want to run against Postgres, and how about your application, and uh, we can help you run against Postgres. Most of our time in Holland, we, of course, deal with our uh, end customers, but a lot of time coming up with application vendors, converting their applications that they can support Postgres for their customers. And the customer can choose, okay, I want to have it run on Oracle, or I want to have it run on Postgres. Yeah? Another proof of concept is more from uh, the maintenance point of view, is uh, let's say a, a high, availability, high availability proof of concept. And then we're going to prove that you can run uh, as high available with, it, with Postgres as you can run with Oracle. There's one thing with Oracle we cannot match, and that's Oracle RAC. So if you're using Oracle RAC, and you have your high availability services non-interruptible, and if something happens to the infrastructure, there may be no interruption at all, and that's why you have chosen Oracle RAC. That's your mission-critical system, and we don't going to start with those ones. There is no solution yet for an Oracle RAC to convert it with the same kind of uptimes with Postgres. But everything underneath that, and with Oracle Data Card and with, let's say, uh, uh, replication and have local failover in a data center and when the whole data center goes you have your system ready in another data center for all those, let's say, setups there are solutions with Postgres. Either way you run with VMware or you're running on, let's say, dedicated hardware in Linux or you start to look for Rev. So a Red Hat virtualization, for all those kinds of platforms, there is a solution to make your Postgres environment as high available as with an Oracle environment. 
and therefore of course we use all the features in the 9 version of Oracle and we have 9.0 with asynchronous app replication, 9.1 9 with synchronous replication and asynchronous replication and 9.2 with cascade replication. And you can have your cold, your warm or your hot standby, you can have let's say your hot backups um, and all, all the things that belongs to it. And the third block is about the performance. So then we have a database loaded with data, we have our application, we have our high available environment, and then we start to do some stress testing and do <coughs> and prove that the Postgres environment is as fast as the Oracle environment. And our general point of view, if you take an Oracle system and put it on Postgres, on general, most queries are a little bit faster on Postgres. And of course, there are always are queries there that they're running blazing fast on Oracle and they don't perform on Postgres. We also see the other way around. You have prone queries on Oracle and they run really smooth on Postgres. And then you start to see, okay, what's happening here? Why, uh, why, why are there problems? Is there a bad plan? What's going wrong? And we try to sort out and rewrite queries and make sure that the, that the performance is as fast as in your Oracle environment. And you find all your different aspects of your system, uh, which you can tune, of course. Postgres runs differently on an operating system than Oracle does. Or Postgres is a more mean and lean application. So it, it's more directly connected to the operating system as Oracle is. Uh, every table, for example, in Postgres is a file on the operating system. In Oracle, uh, we have table spaces that consist of data files, and in these, those data files we have the tables. So there is more distance between the operating system and the DBMS. And this is our last talk we normally do, and we try to prove every POC that we can be as successful as we are on Postgres. And this is the way we try to do our migration. I talked about the Oracle compatibility. Um, of course you can choose to say, okay, I want to rewrite my system and completely run it on Postgres without the Oracle compatibility. That's also a choice you have. But most customers we deal with come from an Oracle database, normally choose for the Oracle compatibility and try to change as little as possible on their application to get it running on a Postgres system. The lessons we've learned from the things we've done. I think we, it's safe to say that every system can run on a Postgres database. There's no system out there which can only be successful on Oracle and not run on Postgres. Maybe if you try to convert your application from Postgres or from Oracle to Postgres, you run into some problems. But if you initially start a system, any system you're trying to think of which can run on an Oracle environment can also run on a Postgres environment. So if you start from scratch, there's no reason why to choose not from for Postgres. The other thing is what we see is migrate only what you need. If we talk about legacy systems, we talk about a lot of software there, a lot of tables, a lot of databases, and try to figure out what you actually need. And we, our experience is that there is a lot of uh, out there that is actually not used anymore, but there for a long time, nobody tried, dares to touch it. We leave it run as is, whether we use it or not, we don't know, but it runs, so never change a winning team. But if you start to convert to Postgres, make sure that you convert only the things you really use and clean up your system. I already mentioned own built applications versus vendor applications. If you have a vendor application, you have to talk to your vendor or let Enterprise DB, if you want to run with the Oracle compatibility, let Enterprise DB talk to your application vendor. Because they have a lot of contacts with application vendors and try to get applications certified on Postgres or an Enterprise DB. And we know that the Oracle compatibility from EDB boosts the migration. We see faster migrations if you use the migration toolkit for Enterprise DB. And if you're coming from an Oracle environment, that, uh, that those Oracle compatibility can really fasten your track to Postgres. 
Uh, do not force 100% Oracle compatibility. You can say, okay, this is the syntax on, on Oracle and it runs okay on Oracle. I try to do that on Postgres and it does not work. If I do this on Postgres, it runs smoothly, but I don't want to do it because this is the Oracle syntax and I, I want to stick to the Oracle syntax. But if it is not completely the Oracle syntax, but it runs really well, use it. And one example is what we talked about before is about the partition tables. It runs differently in Postgres as in Oracle. Don't try to force Postgres to act like Oracle on partition tables because from an architectural point of view, Postgres is not Oracle and that's why it does not behave the same. Phased approach, don't do anything at once. Take your first application, building trust, embedding the product within the organization and then do your next migration. Funding your proof of concepts. Doing a proof of concept costs money, costs time for people to do it and therefore costs money. Make sure you have the right funding. And the other thing is choose a partner with experience because trying to figure out what's going on, if you have a lot of experience, things can go much faster than figuring out what, what you need to do. And manage the return of investment expectations. We talk about, uh, let's say, total cost of ownerships, and we talk about uh, Oracle, and we talk about Postgres. Sometimes we see that the Postgres environment, if we talk about licensing, which you don't have in Postgres, but you have in Oracle, and you talk about support, so support subscription, that in a Postgres environment, you end up with 20% of the total cost of ownerships than with it comparable with an Oracle environment. So you can save a lot of money there, but a migration will cost money. So you have to make sure what you gain on one side and what you spend on the other side. And maybe you earn everything back within the first year or maybe in the first two years, and then you start to make your money because you have your lower cost, total cost of ownership. And make sure that all the right people are involved doing a migration. If you have architects uh, running around, DBAs running around, make sure they're involved and know what's coming to them. Otherwise, they will not accept the new system or it is more difficult for them to accept a more system and people start to reject new solutions. And you have to build trust, like I said before, and that is, is what you're also getting by involving all the people. Uh, make sure that if you involve people that let's say they have the time to spend on the project, on the new project. Sometimes we see within a the customer they want to go over but they are so clocked up in all the work that they don't, do not have time for conversions and those conversions hardly are successful. Another thing is training, make sure that everybody is trained not at the end of the project but start with training at the beginning, make sure that everybody knows his stuff and manage the risk, what I'm going to do when things go wrong. Those are the things you have to think about uh, when you start a migration. And all those things add up to organizational commitment. Make sure that the organization is committed by we want to adopt this new database product. Because often we see that it's a, it is a new, another technology coming in next to the technology they already have. So first you have to invest also into this new technology and grow towards mission critical over time. So get your mission critical not in the first migration but do it later on. Here are some projects we've done. Um, I've taken some projects from the, from the last years. Um, some, um, the size of the database, that's what the size shows you. Well, small database to let's say seven terabytes, big databases big financial database with kind of reporting services with hundreds of users and an uptime of 24-7. Uh, so we see really large systems with really large databases running successfully on Oracle. Um, there's another interesting, this, this financial OLTP system is uh, for example like an, uh, a fraud detection system and every request within Postgres has to return within 60 milliseconds. If it is slower than that, the step is skipped. And we don't want that in the whole uh, transaction. Yeah. So also with 
uh, where, let's say, performance is really critical, there we see successful systems uh, with Postgres. Um, so the, yeah, that's a list we've done with uh, some some figures. We see all the P systems, batch systems, uh, web systems. So 24/7 with thousands of users and terabytes of databases, and they all run smoothly on a Postgres environment. Functions in What do you mean? You have to write them. No, 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 no. Let's say, no. Postgres for, for itself is is let's say, very suitable for old base systems. So uh, the locking is there. The multi-version concurrency control is there. So so if you start to run transactions, then uh, yeah, you don't have to do it, take any special steps. Old base. Analyzing. OLAP, OLAP, that, that's something different than all the pain. Yeah, okay, oh, uh, yeah. Postgres is, is, is less strong, let's say, in, 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 uh, uh, in those kind of systems with big reporting systems, with analyzing systems, that, that there's Postgres less suitable for. We see examples for customers who run, run it as a data where, uh, Postgres as a data warehouse. Enterprise Bay also provide, um, uh, let's say, replication software where you can replicate from an Oracle database to a Postgres <coughs> database. And we have some customers who replicate Oracle data to a Postgres database and use the Postgres database for their data warehousing and 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 kept using their Oracle system as their old base system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you using uh, your own converting tools or? Uh, yeah. We're using our own data converting tool to make it as fast as possible if you start to migrate fast amounts of data. But for migrating schemas and migrating all the objects, we use the tools from Enterprise DB. That means the Oracle compatibility from Enterprise DB. And they, they provide some migration tool. And the server and advanced versions. Yes. You're using this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. OK. Any more questions? I have a question. Um, is this um, enterprise TV layer uh, or compatibility? Is this proprietary software? Yes. Yes, that is proprietary software. Yeah. So, and but there is also a public project who provides the same kind of functionality uh, out there. But um, uh, yeah, if you start using um, the PPAS version, the, the advanced server for version of Enterprise DB, then you get that um, uh, Oracle compatibility, which is at the moment proprietary. Yeah. So basically, you, you, you start from a proprietary system, but then also you end up with a proprietary system? Um, yeah, sometimes we see that, let's say, using the Oracle compatibility is just a temporary effect. You can always migrate your code to native Postgres, and then at one point in time, you can all completely skip your, uh, your uh, Oracle compatibility layer. And what is the financial difference between Oracle databases and the enterprise layer? Well, with Oracle, you, if you have a new server and you want Oracle on it, you have to buy a license to start with, and then you pay support for support. Uh, with Enterprise Bay, you only uh, pay for support if you want support. So yeah, they have a subscription model, and they, if you want support, they, you, you, they're going to charge you for support. You don't have to buy the software. Yeah. It means that you can use these converting tools without any paying that. Using these converting tools means if you download PPAS, you officially have 60 days of evaluation of the software. And if you don't want to continually use that software, you have to get uh, a subscription for it. That's and how is the price for this license coming? The, um, the website from EnterpriseDB is www.enterprisedb.com and all the actual prices are on their website. Yeah, yeah they're open there, they're, they're there. So, uh, yeah. Do you know the other converting tools or Aura to PG? Yeah, Aura to PG. Um, yeah, we've seen customers uh, using that for migration, migrating away from Oracle to native Postgres. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
not, not keeping their... Uh, sometimes we see customers who have Oracle code and want to maintain one code base and run against Oracle and run against Enterprise to be with Oracle compatibility. Uh, and so they, they keep on using the Oracle compatibility layer. And then you cannot use it or a 2 uh, I think my question, my question would be shown the answer to the question in the Enterprise DB is not open source. That's why also yeah. irgendwie uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not totally agree with what you say because I see that a lot of uh, uh, code what they provide is going back to the community version because they have two committers on the payroll and everything is going back. To, so the, the software really benefits from the things Enterprise DB does. And if you want to truly have support support on Postgres without the Oracle compatibility, then you can have support with Enterprise DB, and then you don't have a vendor lock-in at all, because you, you're using open source software with some pro support from Enterprise DB. If you don't want that provider anymore for the support, you can choose another company to give you the support, so you don't have a lock-in at all. If we talk about purely the Oracle compatibility layer, then I agree with you. Ich möchte vielleicht noch zwei Sachen anmerken, die nicht direkt, die nicht im Zusammenhang stehen. Vielen Dank für die Erläuterung. Ich sehe das schon auch ähnlich. Ja. Enterprise DB und wirklich viel für Postgres. Es gibt noch eine Webseite in der Schweiz, die wir speziell gemacht haben. Alle die Firmen, die sich mit Postgres äh, auseinandersetzen, heißt www.postgres-support.ch. Da können sich Firmen freiwillig registrieren. Da können Sie vielleicht auch mal drauf schauen, was. Äh, wer das anbietet in der Schweiz. Es ähm, sind nicht so viele, aber es sind ein paar. Und wir haben vorhin beim Essen noch besprochen, Stefan Keller und ich, dass wir unbedingt erwähnen müssen, dass wir daran sind, für nächstes Jahr einen Postgres Day in der Schweiz äh, zu organisieren. Also ähnlich wie diese Postgres Days in Deutschland und Tschechei und so sowas auch mal in der Schweiz zu machen. Herzlichen Dank, Mike. Herzlichen Dank für deine Ausführungen. Das war sicherlich.